Hey all, Church of SDF here. So, if I manage to pull this video off, then I honestly think it'll be one of my more important videos. But, um, to be quite frank, I probably won't, mainly because I, as usual, didn't really spend enough time preparing it, because I'm lazy and busy, which is a terrible combination. And how can a lazy person be busy? It's by being stupid and getting yourself into a situation where you have to do a lot of work, whether you like it or not. Um, so please pity me. But it's another um, challenge to anarcho-capitalists, basically. Um, and towards a specific category of anarcho-capitalists. So when I when I look at other, I guess, ideologies or economic political systems, there is a specific group that I really want to have a dialogue with, and that is the well-meaning people. Because I know there are sociopaths out there on all sides. They don't really care about other people. Um, and so to have conversations with them really is quite pointless. But I also know, and I didn't know this at first, at first I thought, well, you know, I came to my position because I mean well. Um, and so other people must have come to their opposing position because they're they're either stupid or or mean. Um, and I've realized that's not the case. No, other people came to other positions by uh, by thinking a lot about topics um, and because their reasoning took them there. And a lot of those people mean really well. And um, that that to my to my honest surprise, that included m many many people in the anarcho-capitalist community as well. Some of which I think are clearly ethically my betters um, in terms of um, what they do for society, what they give back, um, the views that they hold and the uh, conviction with which they follow them. But I still disagree with their, um, their solution um, and whether that's whether I make a good case that that's for you to decide and that, that it's always I'm always open to change my mind but so for someone to change my mind there will probably have to be one of those people who I understand really um, mean well for all of humanity rather than just thinking about about their their little cosmos um, but as I said I've I found those people in pretty much any place I looked so that is why I'm very interested and one of those people um, on the anarcho-capitalist side is uh, Jacob Spinney and if I remember I'll put the link to him down there um, he is very much an anarcho-capitalist um, but he also is I, I, I've only seen his videos I've never talked to him but he seems to be a really really decent human being um, and so that's really impacted me um, so check out his stuff and if you're on my side of the fence you'll find it very challenging because he's a really smart guy if you're on his side of the fence then you're going to find a lot of excellent material there um, but my argument today will again be towards that kind of anarcho-capitalist the one that has compassion and empathy um, so but it's also it's also something I guess mm, well it's mainly towards towards those on the right-wing side of economics. So the idea I've heard put forward by um, anarcho-capitalists and Christian kind of conservatives like uh, Hannity say when uh, discussing why uh, unfettered capitalism and free markets won't be bad for people who are for through no fault of their own disadvantaged like say people that fall on hard times because they lose their job or they get into a terrible accident or maybe as we know some people are just born with terrible problems whether they're physical problems that pile up huge medical bills or um, mental problems that cause them to um, have developmental issues like they're they're not quite as um, intelligent or they have huge learning difficulties whatever so the argument goes that um, 
that this is no problem for the super competitive free market because after all we have charity and charity will help those people so um, it's and and even in Rand that's kind of the defense I hear from objectivists because objectivists want to win um, people over obviously and so they don't want to you know talk about how they're gonna toss all the all the cripples off the cliff I'm being a little bit unfair I guess but you know sorry <laughs> but so they 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 say well no that's where charity comes in and as long as you're happy doing charity and it makes you feel good it's a great thing you know um, but I have a little bit of a problem here because another argument I've heard and this came from people like uh, uh, Rand what's sorry Rand Paul um, the son of Ron Paul uh, when it came to his not really supporting the Civil Rights Act because it was too much government interference he wants the government to let businesses discriminate and the market will regulate it because discrimination is not economically viable um, so therefore the discriminatory communities or businesses will basically get defeated by competition and we will get to a system of um, of racial equality now my question here is this implies that there is this kind of competition on a communal basis as well um, yet the idea that we have charity in the community towards people who may never be able to contribute to that community in a meaningful way like someone who has severe intellectual disabilities um, or just disabilities enough to make them on the whole not a productive member of society um, if you already have enough people um, then the idea behind keeping them alive is that there's something ingrained in us humans which makes that society I guess feel sad at that person being killed so they step in and they take up the slack but in this competitive environment the society <laughs> who through whatever means manages to uh, drop that kind of ethical framework that manages to um, go beyond those constraints that manages to get rid of their unproductive members of society so they can cast them out or do something worse to them whatever it is they will be more competitive because they don't have to pay for those uncompetitive people and if they cast them off then maybe the society next door that does care about those people is going to take them in and going to start paying even more money towards those people leading them to become even less competitive leading the goods from the neighboring society to um, because they're basically not paying that charity tax which is uh, which everyone that's providing charity needs to pay to make those people um, better off so there the goods and services from that uncharitable uh, community become more and more um, competitively advantaged as a matter of fact the more sociopathic you become the less regard you have for the falling by the wayside of any of your fellow people in that community if the whole community acts like that consistently that is all the better as a matter of fact if we do a bit of um, ad absurdum here um, if that community basically develops a kind of hive machine mentality where they just go on and whenever someone drops off they just kill them off and they don't care at all even if it's their own mother that's too old to work and they just eliminate because not not productive anymore that is more efficient so economically speaking um, they will be able to dominate all of the nearby communities uh, if there's an open market their goods will be cheaper because they do not need to provide um, orphanages for children um, if they have enough labor force they don't need to provide aged care homes they don't need to provide um, they don't need to provide homes for uh, people with whatever disabilities whether they're physical or, or mental um, they can just get rid of those people 
and if you have enough money then when you're old you'll take care of yourself if you don't too bad and this community which has somehow evolved the traits of being able to well so the, the individual still hates obviously being killed or being gotten rid of but they can look at a fellow individual being gotten rid of with total lack of any kind of feeling that's the most competitive community and that community can buy up over time all of the other communities through how cheap their goods are and the most compassionate community will be the first one to go uh, because the fact that they're just providing uh, you know the one that's providing not just life support for its disabled people but other you know things to make their life good that's you know that's one of those when people talk about uh, when when right-wing uh, people often talk about these kind of uh, stealth taxes that's one of those stealth taxes even if it's paid voluntarily voluntarily if the community has a pool of money it's still coming out of that pool so in the end when they're in competition against this other community they're gonna have to decide either quit all of that and become competitive stop paying the stealth tax or keep paying it until you go under and I think I personally think that is a perfectly fair question to ask how can the concept of charity in a anarcho-capitalist society um, how how does that how does that discourage or does that in fact encourage some other societies um, to be created that basically get rid of those things that a lot of us consider um, important and indeed defining human characteristics like empathy because without empathy that society may well run better especially as long as it's in competition with other societies who it can then use um, in various ways um, and really that kind of goes back to what I see in the in today's world as well I, I do see increasingly um, this competitive spirit um, hollowing out people's compassion for one another but then again, you know, obviously anarcho-capitalists will say, well, that's all crony capitalism. That's because this people are being forced to pay taxes, and if they didn't, then they would love to provide lots of charity. But but what are you going to do against that community that, that has um, grown beyond those simple human failings of empathy and charity? Just a question. Let me know what you think, guys. I'll talk to you all later.